Have you ever wondered what would happen to a brass nozzle if you use it to print an abrasive filament? No. Well, wonder no more. Great. Like the title of the video says, I printed 50-ish Benchies with carbon fiber filled PLA filament, and the results may surprise you. Probably not. So, to make sure I started off with a fair baseline, I bought a brand new 0.4mm E3DV6 brass nozzle to install on my fake Prusa Orbalo printer. If we take a look at it under a microscope, we can see that the hole is indeed 0.4mm in diameter. The filament I'm using is a semi-budget carbon fiber filled PLA that I bought on Amazon about a year ago for another project. This filament is terrible, and I would not recommend it to anybody. But I forgot all about that, so I started printing away. The hole in a lot of standard 3D printer nozzles is 0.4mm by default. You can buy bigger or smaller nozzles depending on what you're trying to print and what printer you're using, but this one is 0.4mm. That is a very small hole, and it doesn't do so well with passing particles larger than 0.4mm through it. For most standard filaments, this isn't usually a problem, because generally the whole spool of filament is plastic and melts easily enough to fit through the hole. This only becomes a problem when you try to print filaments that have particles embedded in them. If the quality control of the size of those particles isn't as thorough as it needs to be, you end up with bigger chunks of those particles embedded in the filament and a horribly clogged nozzle. And trying to clean out carbon fiber particles from a brass nozzle isn't the most fun thing in the world. I should know, since the nozzle clogged about five or six times throughout the course of trying to print these benchies. There were a few other failures due to user error, like not cleaning the bed off with rubbing alcohol between prints, and standard run-of-the-mill printer gremlins. But the nozzle clogs really stretched out filming for this video by about two weeks, which was a real pain in the ass. Anyway, I used Prusa Slicer to slice the benchies, and I printed two at a time because starting a print and a camera 25 times was more than enough. I used the same G-code file on an SD card for every print, and I started with the remaining filament on a partially used spool. For the most part, printing with the first spool was fine. There were a few hiccups like having a bad filament spool holder that didn't want to stay in place, but for the most part, all of those benchies printed fine. However, switching to a new spool of filament brought on the terror of having to unclog the nozzle several times. I guess there really isn't much to say about it except, don't buy this filament. I had the same problem with the other spool last time I tried to print with it, but that was about a year ago, so I did not remember. Here's some bonus footage of me cleaning out the nozzle the first time. I thought I had it cleared up, so I put it all back together, and it was still clogged. I think I got annoyed with it at this point, and just walked away for a few days. But I eventually got it unclogged and continued printing. So anyway, suffering through the rest of the time lapses with the occasional failure and clogged nozzle, we can move on to the results. Suffer. 
Every night, I can feel my leg. After taking the nozzle back off of the printer, cleaning it up, and looking at it under a microscope next to a new 0.4mm nozzle, you can see that the hole has grown noticeably bigger. Granted the comparison nozzle is some cheap nozzle I got in a pack from Amazon, so it may not be 100% dimensionally accurate, but I measured as closely as I could with a pair of calipers under the microscope, and the cheap nozzle is fairly close to 0.4mm. However, the nozzle I used to print the benchies is now roughly 0.52mm. That's enough to skew the quality of your prints pretty severely. You can adjust your slicer settings for the increase in nozzle size, but the nozzle isn't likely to wear evenly, so you're probably not going to get as good of quality as you would going with an actual 0.5mm nozzle. Also worth mentioning that even though 50 benchies sounds like a lot, this didn't even take a full spool of filament to print them. That means you're not going to get a lot of mileage out of your brass nozzles if you're trying to print abrasive filaments. So what's the solution to this problem? You can buy a hardened steel nozzle, which is what was installed on my Orbalo printer before, and they work okay, but they still wear out. And in my experience, they don't transfer heat as well as brass nozzles, so I often have to print at higher temperatures. There's also the Olsen Ruby nozzle, which I have installed on a couple of my printers. They're expensive as f but they seem to do a great job of transferring heat, and I haven't had one wear out yet, even printing abrasive filaments. So comparing the first Benchy to the last one, you can see they're not that different, at least from the side view. But when we look at the bottom of the boats, it's pretty obvious there is a difference. As I said, the G-code is the same for both prints, so Benchy number 50 was effectively trying to use slicer settings for a 0.4mm nozzle with a 0.52mm nozzle. So why does the rest of the Benchy look okay if the bottom of the Benchy looks like garbage? Well, Benchies are designed to look nice and print easily. They're not really a good torture test for your printer. They do have a few overhangs and bridges, and can be a good test of a basic printer setup and settings if you're dealing with some serious print quality issues. Also, they look pretty cool if you haven't seen a couple hundred of them already, so they can be fun to print when you're first getting started. However, if you're trying to troubleshoot more minute quality issues on your printer after you've already got it mostly set up, you're probably better off going with something that's closer to what you actually want to print. For example, if you've tried to print an object that requires a lot of support and it keeps failing when it gets to a certain print height, it's usually a good idea to just print the relevant part of that object and troubleshoot until you get that worked out. Most slicers have the option to either cut the object you want to print at a certain layer height or actually lower the print into the bed and only print the part that's above the print surface. There are lots of torture tests out there like the obligatory stringing test and certain tolerance tests, but despite struggling through getting a torture test to print perfectly, it's a waste of time if that doesn't translate to good quality on what you actually want to print. However, if you actually want to print torture tests, go right ahead, I'm not going to stop you. So what are the takeaways from this video? Don't print abrasive filaments with a brass nozzle, and don't buy this filament specifically. Seriously. There are other brands that have considerably better quality control, but they're usually more expensive. Anyway, if you feel like this video was at all interesting or helpful, feel free to click the like or subscribe button. I know I've been uploading music on this channel occasionally, and some of you really aren't crazy about that. So I created a second channel specifically for music that I'm working on, and I'll mostly try to stick to uploading 3D printing videos here. If you want to check out the music channel, the link is in the description below. There isn't a lot there right now, but I make a lot of different styles of music, so there will be more there eventually. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Ever. And ever.